Today we're going to look at the start index reference function and show some code example both in ladder and structured text. Show it on a scope and a little bit of review at the end. All that right after this. All right, in this example, we're going to do a very simple program. There's going to be two different indexes of type index reference. One index is going to be in the positive direction, uh, 1,000 counts, and the other index is going to be in the negative direction, 500 counts. To start off, I'm going to use this box with enable. This is a handy box to start with because it places a box with a contact on the ladder rung for you, saving some time. Next, we're just going to grab our start index reference and drag it over to the two boxes. Now we are just simply going to populate the input data to each of the blocks. For this drive, menu 8 is the digital inputs. Parameter 5 represents input 5 and parameter 6 represents input 6. I would use positive edge to context anytime I'm dealing with start index reference. This is because this particular function will command a new index based on the last reference every time this block runs. Let's say we wrote this code without any positive edged contacts and our start index reference based on the scan time actually executed three times before we opened up the contact. If the distance was a value of 1000 like we have here, the resulting index would actually be 3000 because it would add the three indexes together. Just to show you that we are online, I'm cycling input 5 and input 6 so that you can see the contacts light up. Right, the program I have before you is called CT Scope. I have it pre-set up to show us the position, the speed, and the two digital inputs. On the top window, you can see digital input 5 and digital input 6. The purple line is digital input 5. The red line is digital input 6. In the bottom graph, there are two lines. There's a green line which is the position. You can see that it's changing state each time one of the digital inputs come on. And you can also see the speed profile down below change. If you look closely here, every time input 6 turns on, the green line in the bottom graph goes down by 500 counts. You'll also notice that every time input 5, which is the purple line in the top graph, turns on, that the green line in the bottom graph goes up by 1000 counts. This index has the characteristics that if you keep telling it to index before the last index is complete, the index will just add the distance onto the current index. Here you can see that I'm telling the index to index two times, and because of that it's adding 1000 plus 1000, it's actually going 2000. We're basically going to rewrite the same program in structured text that we did in ladder logic. I'm just going to speed forward so you can see kind of what I've done. Basically, I'm going to use the input assistance wizard to insert the start index reference. Then I'm just going to populate the data. I'm also going to add a little extra condition to make sure that we don't accidentally fire this index more than one time. Kind of like the positive edge thing we had in ladder logic. Here's our finished program in structured text. Now let's review the inputs to this block. All the inputs are 32-bit dent values. Acceleration and deceleration have to be values greater than zero. A value of zero will cause the drive to trip. The velocity must be a positive value, but can be zero. The distance command can be negative or positive. To use this block, we call it one time to start the index, or we call it any time we need to change the profile settings. If you like this video, please subscribe or put a comment below.